Let's look at the, the background, the economic background to this, or the political economic background to what's happened in the last 40 years, the so-called globalization of financial markets. Um, financial markets have been liberalized pretty much across the entire world. Exchange controls have been eliminated. Trade tariffs and trade taxes have been cut as part of financial uh, trade liberalization. Um, that's very important for most developing countries because trade taxes and trade tariffs accounted for a very large part of their government revenues. 60% in the case of some African countries. And by pushing trade tariffs to be cut, which is the IMF WTO agenda, and pushing for the substitution of value-added tax in most cases, or some GST, they moved away from progressive taxes to aggressive taxes in almost all cases. And the IMF fessed up um, a few years ago when they looked at how this had worked out. Um, and they said, at best, for every 30, for every dollar of revenue lost as a result of cutting back on tariffs, freight tariffs, at best we could cover 30 cents through the 18. That's how catastrophic the impact of this shift of the tax charge has been across developing countries. Um, there has, of course, been a massive expansion across border trade and investment. You'll all be familiar, I'm sure, with the fact that the biggest investor in Mauritius, sorry, in India, is the island of Mauritius. The biggest source of investment flowing into China is the British Virgin Islands. <coughs> What's the story here? The story here is quite simple. Indian investors have been shifting their capital offshore into Mauritius. Chinese have used BVI and then bringing it back onshore into China as foreign direct investment with all the tax breaks and privileges that that been hidden behind offshore companies. So when you start looking at the so-called success story of globalization in terms of releasing investment but to go into the south, you'll find a huge proportion of it is in fact what's called round trip capital. Sadly, we have no idea what the proportion is. Because neither the IMF nor the OECD or any of the other agencies are able to distinguish round trip capital from genuine foreign direct investment. Just, just to follow up on that one, by the way, in 1999 we did actually have a very interesting glimpse into this during the, uh, the Southeast Asian financial crisis, which spread across the world and hit Brazil in January 1999. And at that time, um, Brazil, the rail came under pressure, uh, and there was a huge capital outflow from Brazil in the course of three or four days. Almost all of that capital came, went out to the Cayman Islands and subsequently came back, over 90%. And that's an indication that the vast majority of investment into uh, Brazil was actually Brazilian capital being run through it. Uh, so that's, that's the kind of background. This is where this fits into globalization theory. There's been a rapid growth of what's called intra-company trades, cross-border trade, not cross-border, cross-border, these go missing, within multinational companies, and that becomes very important because multinational companies have a huge incentive around tax avoidance to trade across borders uh, and to set up uh, trade mispricing structures. I'll take you through an example of that in a few minutes of time. Um, same time, developing countries in particular have come under huge pressure to provide tax incentives, tax holidays here, or subsidies there, or lower rates here. Um, and we now reach this, the absurd situation where far from being able to tax inward investment, in some extreme cases, countries, the poorest countries of the world, are actually subsidizing inward investment. Tax holidays, sometimes 20 years, plus the outlook will provide you cheap labor, cheap energy, we'll build the roads, and we'll provide you with the facilities. That's a negative tax contribution. The process called tax competition is driving that. And the rest I think you're open for many of us. And this is perhaps the most toxic part of all. Multinational companies have turned tax avoidance into a profit center, a legitimate profit center. 
they argue that tax avoidance, or tax efficiency as they call it, um, actually stimulates affecting markets. Uh, you just have to think about that for 10 seconds and you realize this is complete nonsense. It's economic nonsense, it's political nonsense. Um, but they, they get away with it because very few politicians are prepared to take them on. 